Can people live again? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that in this chapter, Matthew chapter 28, and the wonderful moment when his disciples realize oh, he's actually alive. <laughs> Let's read. After the Sabbath, as it began to dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from the sky and came and rolled away the stone from the door and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. The angel answered the women, don't be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just like he said. <laughs> Come and see the place where the Lord was lying. Go quickly and tell the disciples, he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I've told you. They departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. As they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! <laughs> they came and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And then he said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers that they should go into Galilee, and there they'll see me. Now, while they were going, behold, some of the guards came into the city and told the chief priests all the things that had happened. When they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave a large amount of silver to the soldiers, saying, Say that his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and make you feel, make you free of worry. So they took the money and did as they were told. This saying was spread abroad among the Jews and continues until this day. But the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had sent them, when they saw him, they bowed down to him, but some doubted. Jesus came to them and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe everything that I have said, and behold, I am with you, even to the end of the age." Amen. <laughs> it's the end of the Gospel of Matthew. And um, that last chapter, which is a shorter one, summarizes 40 entire days down into just 20 verses. It's a great, great little chapter. You know, Mary is at the tomb, the two Marys, and Jesus is there, and the angel says, He has risen from the dead just like he told you. <laughs> it's like, oh, he did tell us that. <laughs> and then Jesus appears and says, rejoice. And it's like, it's like everything is just completely different to how they thought. And that is exactly what happens when you invite Jesus into your heart. It's like he comes in and you become born again and you're alive and it's like all of a sudden, all of life, it's just different. It's just completely different to what you thought. Jesus is real. <laughs> he's alive. He's, it's not just a person you talk about. He's living. And yes, he was physically living to them, but he's living today. He's alive to us who know him. And so they took a hold of his feet and they worshipped him. And I bet <laughs> there were a few sorries, like, Lord, I'm sorry we didn't believe you. And Jesus says, don't be afraid. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Go and tell my brothers, the disciples. And, um, and they do. It, it's very, very cool, a number of things that happen here in this chapter. The resurrection is the one point that's, that's really argued about. And, um, you know, Paul... Uh, Paul says that, that if the resurrection didn't happen, all of our faith is pointless, which is true. If Jesus, just, if Jesus was God, but he died and that was it, well, then God's dead. You know, it's all over. But no, he's not dead. <laughs> and it's at this point that 
that people attack. But the resurrection is very, very provable in many, many different ways. And there are people like William Lane Craig, no point, no time now to go into all the things that are said about the resurrection. But for example, just to give you a few of the types of things that are said about the resurrection, um, Jesus appears first to women. You would never appear, you would, if you were trying to make up a story, you would never say, you would never use women in the ancient world as your witnesses, as your first witnesses. It, you wouldn't, they're not, they weren't authentic or credible in ancient times. They are now. We all, we believe women now. In fact, women are some of the best witnesses now. And, uh, <laughs> but in ancient times, they weren't tr considered credible, even though they very well probably were. You know, people like these Marys were great, trustworthy people. It's just that people didn't trust them. So you'd never make up a story and use women as the ones that the Messiah first appeared to. No, he, he would have appeared to much more credible people. The, the resurrection story is full of stuff like that, which if you made up, you'd never make up. But it's this way because it's true. Another thing here, which I always thought was so remarkable, is that Jesus doesn't give them the Great Commission. So the Great Commission is the last few verses. Go into all the world and make disciples. He doesn't say that to them until after he's risen from the dead. In other words, if he doesn't rise up from the dead, there's no Great, there's no great Commission. There's no Christianity. There's no church. There's no missionaries. There's no spreading around the world with the gospel. It just dies along with Jesus. Another thing, all the disciples except for John, all die believing that he was alive. They say, we are witnesses of the risen Savior, and they die for their faith. Peter is crucified upside down in Rome. Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross. Um, they, they will die believing that Jesus raised from the dead. Um, the church wouldn't exist if Jesus hadn't risen from the dead. Anyway, these are all the types of things that scholars explore, and William Lane Craig is one of the best explainers of it. You can go and check him out on YouTube. And um, so we get right down to the end, and Jesus says, now he, notice he gets them to go to Galilee. He gets them out of Jerusalem. He gets them back to the area where they are, and, and then he has 40 days with them, which are summarized here. But a few of the stories are in the Gospel of John and in other places. And in those 40 days, they we don't know everything that they did, but I can bet you, I bet you my last dollar <laughs> that, um, that they were remembering things Jesus said. Jesus, you know, Jesus took them aside and said, in two days, I'm going to be betrayed and then I'm going to raise again. And they're, they're now remembering all these conversations like, whoa. <laughs> Jesus said things like, the kingdom of heaven, you know, is like this. And all the parables and everything starts to be understood in a different way. In other words, revelation comes. Now, I have to say one more thing about resurrection and one thing about baptism. Sometimes we have resurrection miracles in the body of Christ. So in, um, for example, Jesus is, in the Bible it says Jesus is the first to be raised from the dead. You may have heard that. It's in the New Testament. It's later on. It's Jesus is the first, it says he's the first to be raised from the dead. But if you go through your Bible in order, he's actually not the first to be raised from the dead. Lazarus is raised, so is Jairus' daughter and the widow's widow of Nain's son. That's in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, um, there are various people that are raised from the dead as well. And so there are, um, there are other resurrections that happen before Jesus. So how is it that Jesus is the first to be raised from the dead? Well, it's like this. When those other people were raised from the dead, they died again. So Jairus' daughter is a little girl. She's 12 years old. Jesus takes a hold of her hand and says, little girl, sit up. She sits up. She's, she comes back alive. But later on in life, she dies again and she's dead, just the same as everyone else. Same with Lazarus. He comes back alive, but later on in life, he dies the same as everyone else. So when you're, when you're resurrected as a result of prayer, like even in Christianity, every now and then you will hear a story of someone who's been raised from the dead, but they again die later on, like that Daniel, um, is it a Chuka in Nigeria, uh, about 20 years ago that was raised from the dead in a Reinhard Bonnke crusade. And um, it's very well documented. He, he even had a death certificate. And um, 
So people are raised from the dead, but then they die again. But when Jesus was raised from the dead, he never dies again. He's, he's raised in a different type of a way. He's raised with a different life. And that's why he's the first to be raised from the dead, because the type of death he's raised from is a different type of death that's being talked about. So when you and I will eventually die in the body, but the Lord as, as Christians will be raised from the dead, will be raised the same way that Jesus was raised, never to die again. <laughs> that's really cool. The last part here is that Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. It's the job of every Christian. Now he gave the, the disciples, the 12 disciples, this special job of only going to the Jewish people to um, because they had to be gathered into the church before Jerusalem and before the end of the age. We've talked about all of that. But now they are given the other job of going into the whole world as well. And it, it actually takes them about 20 years for this to kick in. It's around about Acts chapter 10 that the first Gentiles start becoming Christians. We'll get to that when we get to the book of Acts. So they don't kind of clue up to it straight away. But it, it, we realize it's very clearly here that all along God's plan was not just for Jews only, but for everybody. And he says to baptize them. So baptism is a command of the Lord Jesus. We, are, we become baptized as Christians because Jesus said to do it. We're also baptized because Jesus gives us the example. He himself is baptized and we follow his example. So if you're a Christian and you haven't been baptized, go talk to your local church leader and say, I want to be baptized and follow the example of Jesus. If you've never become a Christian, baptism is a great way of, of becoming a Christian. You can go to your local church leader, or your local pastor and say, I want to follow the Lord and I want to get baptized. And um, so... I encourage you to do it today. Do it as soon as you can. Put the Lord first. Say, I want to follow God with my entire life. Make him a priority. Father, I want to thank you for the gospel of Matthew, the story of Jesus, the King. Thank you, Lord. He's our King. And I pray his words would live in our hearts and go out of our mouths and enter the ears of others and bless them. In Jesus' name, amen.